This is the chapter 18 review. The only part of chapter 18 that we did was the Snell's Law and Refraction part. I have a couple videos on this channel, on the YouTube channel, uh, that talk in general about using Snell's Law and also the critical angle. So I'm just going to run a couple problems here. So we have Snell's Law. This is Snell's Law. N is the index of refraction, a unitless number that measures the optical density of a material. Theta is an angle. So let me draw a couple materials. Here's my normal as the dashed line here. So that's a capital N for normal. Let's just start with something like water. So I'm going to have water down here. That is an index of refraction of 1.33. And let's just have it going into air. We'll go ahead and round out our index of refraction of air to be that, even though it is a little bit bigger than one. I'm going to have an incident angle coming in to hit my normal. Remember, I always measure angles from the normal, and so my theta is going to be measured on that side of the line as opposed to this side of the line. I'm going to make up a number, and I'm going to say that it's 34 degrees. And let us just figure out what the angle is going to be. Now, you can strictly use Snell's law in order to figure this out. I have my indices of refraction. I get to decide what's going to be the left-hand side versus the right-hand side. It really doesn't matter. I'm going to I always like to say that I start in 1 here and then I move to number 2. So that means that that's theta 1 and then theta 2 is going to be up here. Conceptually, don't forget that you can always pair the larger index of refraction with the smaller angle. And so I have the small index of refraction out here. That means this must be a large angle coming out. So theta 2 hopefully better be bigger than 34 uh, degrees. Otherwise, I've, I've done something wrong. So I go ahead and I plug in my numbers here. So I have the index of refraction of water is 1.33, unitless number, times sine of 34 is equal to the index of refraction of air times sine of my variable theta 2. This is nice and easy. I get 0 0.74 on the left hand side. That's still all unitless. is equal to a 1 multiplied by sine theta 2. So the 1 is it's unity. So I just have this is equal to sine theta 2. Now I have to use the inverse sine function in order to get rid of this part here. So it's going to be inverse sine of both sides. So here's that. Inverse sine of sine is what actually gets rid of it. So this is now equal to theta 2 over here. And inverse sine of 0.74 is equal to 48 degrees. So that worked out pretty well for me. Remember I said it better be bigger than 34 degrees, and it was. So it looks like that worked out okay for us. Let's do a new problem here where I'm going to mix it up a little bit and say my interface is a vertical one. That means this is the normal going through here. And I'm going to just set that we are in some very high index of refraction material to begin with. So it's some crazy plastic or something. It's 2.2. And then we're going to have an incident ray come in. That incident ray, I'm going to set my angle here, always against the normal. So my theta, I'm going to say, if that's n1, then this is theta1. It's going to be equal to 12 degrees. And I'm going to have it refract. It's going to refract out like that. And here's going to be my theta2. My theta 2, I'm going to go ahead and give us this value, and I'm going to say that it is 18 degrees. And what I would like to know is what is N2? Question mark. We plug this in. This will be fairly straightforward for us. N1 is 2.2 times sine of 12 degrees is equal to my variable, my unknown, N2, times sine of 18. Okay, over on this side, I'm going to have 0 0.46, that's a rounded number, is equal to N2 times, and then sine of 18 is 0 0.31, also a rounded number. 
Okay, when I plug this into my calculator, and I'm actually using a few more decimal places than what I wrote up here, uh, the index for a fraction of that second material must be 1.48 unitless number. Okay, so I have that, and perhaps now I want to know if I kept pressing my luck and I expanded this, at some point it's going to hit that location where I would have a 90 degree angle. And if I keep going with that, something else has to happen. Don't forget that we call that the critical angle. And so this blue line in here, this would be theta C that's still being measured against the normal here. So there's the pi. So it's still being measured against the normal. What is theta C? What's the critical angle? I claim that it has to be bigger than 12 degrees. I can expand out a little bit, but at some point, it's going to not have room anymore. So I can come up here and I can look at this. Now this is just a variation of Snell's Law. And we can go ahead and use it here. Notice that the N2 must always be the smaller number. The smaller index of refraction has to always be in the numerator because I can't actually have sine of some angle come out to be a number that's greater than 1. So N2's got to be the small one. Well. Just my luck, N2 is the small one, 1 1.48 was over there. So I'm going to say that theta C, excuse me, sine of theta C is equal to N2 for this problem was 1.48 divided by 2.2. So I just do this bit here and then I'm going to do the inverse sine function of both sides. And so I find that theta C is equal to the inverse sine of that quantity. I'll just rewrite it like that. And then I will do all of this in one step in my calculator. Theta C, the critical angle, is going to be 42.3 degrees. Okay? So that's as far out as it can go. And then this diagram's getting a wee bit messy over here. But if I took a really shallow angle, so I came in something like that with the green, where I'm going to say that this is this is 80 degrees now. Now I'm, I'm much larger than the critical angle. So 80 degrees is coming in. My incident angle is greater than the critical angle. That means that I cannot refract through the interface and go to the other material. I have to reflect out. So total internal reflection is going to happen. Angle in equals angle out. Measured again on the left side of things, but again still measured from the normal line here. That would have to be 80. 80 degrees. Those are pretty straightforward. If you need some work with the conceptual, again, I'd point you towards the introductory uh, lessons that I had prepared for you guys. If you think you got it all figured out, let your computer know.